You're listening to How to Win with Mike Moore, the podcast that provides you with practical insights on how to win in every arena of life. Introducing the Mike Moore Ministries mobile app, your gateway to spiritual inspiration and godly leadership. With a host of practical features, it's like having a personal spiritual guide in the palm of your hand. Watch and listen to the How to Win podcast, get exclusive early access to the Answers That Work broadcast before it airs on television, receive uplifting and thought-provoking nuggets, and stay up to date with Mike Moore's speaking engagements through an interactive calendar. To download, visit your device's app store and search Mike Moore Ministries. Hello, I'm Mike Moore, and welcome to the How to Win podcast. These podcasts are based off 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. It says, now thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph in Christ. Listen, I'm so glad to have you with us today. We're going to begin a new series today. So I want you to let somebody know that you are watching How to Win podcast. I'm in my leadership edition, and I believe it's going to be a blast today. So get ready for revelation, get ready for insight, and get ready for your leadership to go to another high level. I want to begin a a two-lesson series, very short series, entitled, So What Do You Really Value? What do you... really value. Now, the theme of this new series, and it's a short one, is a leader's values matter. Your values as a leader matter. You know, I sense that the Holy Spirit was leading me to build a blueprint uh, containing the components of, of leadership. And so sometime back, I began talking on purpose, and the subject was the why matters. Then we moved to vision, and our subject was vision seeing beyond the now. So we've moved from purpose to vision, and now we're talking about values. Your values as a leader matter. So the question is, what do you really value? Do you know what your values are? Do your team know what your values are? Do your followers know what your values are? Our background text is taken from Daniel chapter 6. In just a moment, I'm going to read verses 10 through 12. Daniel chapter 6, verses 10 through 12 in the New Living uh, Translation. Allow me to give you the historical context, uh, including the previous verses. Beginning at Daniel chapter 6, we see that there's a transition taking place, that the Babylonian Empire have been overthrown by the Persian Empire. So the new king now is Darius. And Darius, as, as a king, when I studied the scripture, appeared to be a really good person, a real good man, a a real good leader, and he decided to establish his new administration. So beginning at verse 1, Daniel 6, verse 1, the the scripture says that he established 120 officials, satraps, over his domain, 120. And then it says that he selected three governors to oversee the 120. Possibly 40 officials reported to each governor. And the scripture says Daniel was one of the three. So you've got 120 officials governing the whole provinces. And then you got three governors over the 120, and then you got King Darius. 
The scripture says that Daniel distinguishes himself amongst the three, the other two governors. And, and it tells us why he distinguished himself. It says that a, a spirit of excellence, he had a spirit of excellence on him. And the king, Darius, decided that he would make Daniel number one. So you would eventually have one governor, then two under him, and then the 120 officials. Well, once the two officials discovered that the king was planning to make Daniel number one, they decided to undermine him. And the scripture says that they began to look at his life. Uh, Daniel had, had operated in a level of leadership all through the Babylonian empire for the last 40 years. And they searched the books and the history of, of Daniel and they couldn't find anything wrong. When they looked at his work ethic, his character, uh, his leadership, they couldn't find anything wrong. So they decided that if we're going to trap Daniel, then we have to do it concerning his religion, concerning his God. And Daniel was known as a man of God. He was known as a very spiritual person. He was known as a person who prayed consistently and daily. So they came up with this scheme. They went to King Darius and they said, King Darius, listen, all of us, all of the leaders across all the provinces, we've gotten together and decided that we want to honor you. We think for 30 days, one month, no one should pray to anybody. You're going to be God for the month. And if anybody prays to anybody else other than you, then they would be cast into a den of lions. They were actually playing into Darius' ego. He signed the edict, and once he signed the edict, it could not be changed. Now, that's the context. They have come up with a scheme to undermine Daniel. They have manipulated the uh, king to sign in law an agreement that no one could pray to anyone except the king. Now, listen at the 10th through the 12th verse. And I'm going to read it from the New Living Translation. But when Daniel learned, this is so powerful, when Daniel learned that the law had been signed, in other words, no one could pray to anyone except King Darius. He's going to be God for the month. Now watch this. But when Daniel learned that the law had been signed, he went home and knelt down as usual in his upstairs stairs room with the windows open toward Jerusalem. He prayed three times a day, just as he had always done, giving thanks to his God. Then the officials went together to Daniel's house and found him praying and asking for God's help. So they went straight to the king, reminded him about his law. And the summary of the story is the king realized that he had been manipulated by his own officials. He thought all day long how he could change what he had signed in law. But he realized that once he signed it in law, he couldn't change it. So he was saddened. The Bible says he was distressed. This king had a love for Daniel. He had an appreciation for Daniel. He had appreciation for his character. He had appreciation for his work ethic, his leadership, his trustworthiness. And he would have never signed that thing in, in law had he thought through the situation. So 
he commanded Daniel to be brought, and Daniel was cast into a den of lions. And if you know the end of the story, God sent an angel, shut the lion's mouth. The, the king fasted all night, prayed all night, came down, called out Daniel, and Daniel was still alive, and God had rescued him from uh, the uh, lions. Now, we're talking about values, a leader's values matter. And I'm asking you a question. This question is the, the subject of the two-part series. So what do you really value? Now, Daniel, when we study his life, he was a prophet, but more than a prophet. He had a, a, a unique blend of spirituality and character and skill. Spirituality, he was a man of God. He was committed to prayer. He was committed to God's word. He was committed to serving God. God was his God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was his God. But he was also a man of character because it's possible to be a man of character character and not be a, a man of the spirit, a spiritual man. But he was, a, he was a man of character and a man of skill, and everyone recognized his leadership and respected his leadership. So we see a man who we will look at, and we see a man who was governed by values, and we see a man who was committed to a set of values. So what do you really value? So let's define values. What are values? Values are deep, hell beliefs, standards, or principles that guide our attitude, our choices, and our actions. That's a really good definition. Listen at it again. Values are our deeply held beliefs. What are your deeply held beliefs? Values are our deeply held beliefs, our standards. What are your standards? Or principles that guides our attitudes, our choices, and our actions. Let's look at another definition of values. Values are our personal internal rule book by which we live our lives and make decisions and judgments. Our personal internal rule book. No one has the exact same internal personal rule book as another person. So I'm asking you, so what are your values? Our internal, our personal internal rule book by which we live our lives and make decisions and judgments. Let's look at another definition of values. One more definition. Values have to do with what is important to you, what defines you, what makes you who you are, and what you stand for. I'll give that to you again. Values have to do with four things. What is important to you? What, as a leader, is important to you? Secondly, what defines you? In other words, when people think about you and they think about your leadership, how do they identify, how do they define you? Or if they were asked to define traits that you possess or attributes that you possess, how would they define you? Values have to do with what makes you who you are. What makes you 
who you are. And then finally, values have to do with what you stand for. Do you know what you stand for? Have you ever thought about that? This is so very important. So very important. It's important that we have purpose because the why matters. It's important that we have vision, seeing beyond the now. But it's also important that we possess and we're committed to a set of values. So in the remaining part of this episode, let's talk about why are values important? And let's take a deeper look into Daniel's life. Why are values important? Number one, values are important because they influence our moral judgments. They influence our moral judgments, commitments to personal and organizational goals and the way we relate to people and the way we respond to others. Now, let's slow down. Let's talk about Daniel. Values influence our moral judgments. When you study the life of Daniel and you see him, his leadership, and even how he responded to his enemies, we see a man that's governed by his values. His values influenced his moral judgments. So even when the enemy or his enemies, the other two governors, try to trap him. We see no argumentation. We see no defense. We see no rebuttals. We, do, we don't see him confronting them. He knew they were enemies. But his values influence his moral judgments and his commitment to personal and organizational goals. See, your values should, should influence your personal goals. They should influence your organizational goals. They should influence how you work at work, how you do business, how you operate when no one's looking. Your values should influence your moral judgments. How you relate to people, values influence how you relate to people. Values influence how you respond to people. Number two, number two, values inform the priorities we set and help us to be consistent. They inform the priorities that we set and they help us to be consistent. When you look at Daniel, we see values of faithfulness. Faithfulness was a value because he had had been in leadership for over 40 years in the Babylonian empire and then transitioned right into a new uh, kingdom rule. He was faithful. We see trustworthiness. One of the reasons why the king selected, Dar Dar selected Daniel is because Daniel had integrity. He was trustworthy. And these governors were over not just people and tasks, but they were over finances. And the king wanted people who were trustworthy in these positions. We see integrity in Daniel. We see excellence. The Bible clearly says he had a spirit of excellence on him. We see consistency because our values inform the priorities that we set and help us to be consistent. If family is a value, then you will be spending time with your family and you will be consistent. Number three, why are values important? Because they tell us when to say yes and our values tell us when to say no. When you have a set of values, you know, I can't do this, I can't do that. And you don't have to pray and meditate about it because your values tell you what to say yes to and what to say no to. When the king 
uh, set in motion a law where a person in that kingdom could only pray to Darius, the king. Daniel's values informed him on what to, how to respond. And his response was, no, I'm not going to pray to another man. I'm going to continue to pray to the Almighty God because man is not God. God, only God is God. So his values told him to say no. Our values tell us when to say yes. They tell us when to say no. Third, fourthly, our values give us clarity and courage to navigate difficult situations and to make tough decisions. Man, that's a tough decision. Daniel knew the edict. He knew the law. He knew what had been set in motion. He knew that if he disobeyed this edict of the king, he would be thrown into a den of lions. He knew that. The, the scripture says when he had heard, he went back to his house, went upstairs, knelt down and prayed the same way he always prayed because our values give us clarity. He wasn't confused. He wasn't confused. What should I do? Should I pray? Should I not pray? Should I pray to the king? Not? No, no. Our values give us clarity help us and, and not only clarity, but give us courage to navigate through difficult situations, make tough decisions. Number five, our values help us to explain the choices we make and why we make them. It would have been easier for Daniel to explain to his family why he decided to pray because prayer was a part of his value system. He valued prayer. You know, so I value giving, and in our next lesson, our next episode, I'm going to give you some, uh, I'm going to give you some of my values, and we're going to talk about your values, and we're going to get deeper into it. But one of my values is giving, giving. I value giving. So if I go to a sandwich shop and let's say I get a meal for, let's say, $30, and if I decide to give the waiter $40, that's strange. That will be strange to the waiter because the waiter, they're going to say, for real, are you sure you want to give me this? Because the meal was 30 and I'm giving the person a $40 tip. Well, see, it's easy for me to explain why I'm doing that because I have a value. My value, one of my values is giving. So our values help us to explain the choices we make and why we make them. Number six, our values give us, they're important because they give us and our organization a moral compass a moral compass. In other words, what's our bottom line as an organization? What will we not do? We just not going to do that. It, we just won't do that. What's our border, bottom line? It, it gives you and your organization a moral compass. And then finally, number seven, our values not only motivate, now this is going to be very important, so I'm going to try to slow down and give you this and explain this one. Why are values important? Number seven, they not only motivate our personal behavior, and we talked about that, but our values also determine people's compatibilities. Wow, that's good. Now follow me. I'm going to explain it to you. Our values determine people's compatibilities. Okay, listen. Compatibility of values is crucial in leadership and leadership teams. Follow me. Compatibility of values create a strong foundation for communication, collaboration, decision-making. I'm going to explain that. But compatibility of values create a strong foundation 
on a team now for communication, collaboration, and decision making. Now, here's the explanation. It is easier for leaders and teams with similar values to work together. That's collaboration. Leaders and teams with similar values are more likely to listen and understand each other's perspective. That's communication. Leaders and teams with similar values are more likely to agree on the best course of action. That's decision making. Now, let's go back to our text. Daniel and the two governors. This is Daniel 6. King Darius selected three governors to be over the 120 officials. Daniel was one of the three. Now, follow me. So Daniel and the two other governors were selected by Darius on the same leadership team. So you got Daniel and the two other governors. Now, follow me. But they, Daniel and the two other governors, had mismatched values. Mismatched values. What do you mean by that? Well, Daniel valued integrity, excellence, honor, but the two other governors that tried to undermine Daniel, they valued deceit, manipulation, and doing whatever it took to get ahead and gain power. So you got a team, Daniel and two other governors, but they had mismatched Values. It's possible to have a team with mismatched values. They were teammates destined to failure because they had dramatically different value systems. So here, here's, here's something to remember, leader. When selecting leaders and teammates, make sure that your values are in alignment. When you're selecting leaders and you're selecting team, you don't want to have a team with mismatched values. You want to have a team with values that are in alignment. Now, this, this concludes our lesson for today, but we have another lesson. Now, follow me. And in our next episode, we're going to talk about living out our values. I want to give you a homework assignment that will prepare you for our next lesson. I want you to think about what you value as a person, as a leader. What are your values? And I want you to come up with 10. Try to come up with 10 things that you value. Now, I'm going to give you a list next week. Uh, pardon me, our next episode, but I want you to come up with 10 values. After you come up with your 10, I want you to minimize your list down to five. And then I want you to minimize and decrease your list down to three. Think about your values. I want you to come up with 10 10 values. Now, I'm going to give you my values, things that I value in our next episode, and then I'm going to reduce it to five, and then I'm going to reduce it to three. But we're going to talk about living in our, our values in our next episode. Listen, I love you. Thank you for spending this time with me. I want you to go back and listen to this lesson so you can be ready for our next episode. I pray that you have a successful week, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.